Good afternoon. Uh, I am Andre, and I am working as a software engineer at Red Hat. And I am working on a project called Image Builder. Uh, and today, I would like to show you uh, what's new and how you can use Image Builder to uh, build some uh, nice, up-to-date, customized, and uh, shiny images. Uh, and yeah, uh, by the way, uh, I am going to skip over some of the details, so uh, feel free to ask if something is unclear. And also, we have a website, uh, so if you, are, uh, if you want to more, uh, know more details, go there, there are some guides, and you can follow them basically to do exactly what I am going to show you here. So, let's not waste any time, any more time, and uh, go directly to the important bits. So, uh, what's Image Builder? Uh, Image Builder is uh, a modern tool for building operating system images. We will go into the more depth which exact images we can build, uh, because you know images, it's, it's kind of a generic term. Uh, so we will, we will explore this more later. Uh, but the basic facts are that we are building them from scratch. Uh, so basically, uh, we will download all the repositories, uh, sorry, on <laughs> RPM from the repositories, and then somehow combine them in order to create an image of an operating system. And uh, it's important to know that uh, there are no VMs involved, uh, which is quite nice because a lot of modern cloud environments uh, don't have support for uh, you know, running nested virtualization, so uh, it's kind of nice that you don't need to spawn, spawn a VM. But, of course, uh, then the other method that you can use uh, is to use uh, uh, containers uh, so, and, and you know, like namespacing, so it needs root. Uh, so no VMs, but root required. The important fact uh, is that Image Builder never boots the image, uh, so it's, uh, it makes really sure that it's pristine. And we will get to this later why this is interesting that the image is never booted. Uh, and yeah. This talk will focus on image builder uh, that you can install on your machine. We have also some other options where we will host image builder for you. But uh, yeah, I will mention them at the end of the, uh, at the, of the per first part of my talk. And yeah, so that's image builder, modern tool for building operating system images. Now, what images or what images can it build? Uh, and I will start with distributions uh, because uh, that's, uh, that's the uh, first thing I'm going to mention. So we can build Fedora and its uh, children, uh, which means CentOS Stream and RHEL. Uh, and for Fedora, we of course support all the uh, supported versions. For CentOS Stream and RHEL, that's 8 plus. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but the more interesting part is in for which environments Image Builder can build images. And uh, there is plenty of them. So I actually put them on two slides. Uh, the first slide is about all the cloud images uh, that we can build. Uh, the first uh, bullet point is uh, called KVM, and that's what I like to use for these environments where it's pretty much just KVM without any specialties, which means libvirt, so you can just virt install the images, uh, OpenStack, uh, or QBIRT, uh, you know, OpenShift virtualization. There was a very nice talk earlier today, so if you are eager to try QBIRT after this, uh, after this uh, conference, you can also use Image Builder to use a custom <laughs> image there. And yeah, then we support also all the major cloud players, uh, for example, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Oracle Cloud, and VMware vSphere. And from my experience, the KVM image, if the, if the cloud provider uses KVM underneath, the image usually works. So I, for example, use uh, the images from Image Builder at Hetzner uh, because you can just upload it there and it works because they use KVM, so it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, so these are the cloud environments. But we can even build uh, more, and these ones are, yeah, more interesting, I would say. Uh, we can build installer ISOs, uh, so uh, basically that's, uh, you know, Fedora has the installer and Image Builder can build a customizable, we will get to there uh, later, but it can build a customizable uh, installer that you can then use to uh, install as many bare metal machines as you want, or even virtual machines, but please use images for virtual machines. Uh, it can build containers like the OCI one, so Podman. Uh, just a word of caution, we don't support custom uh, 
container files or Docker files, uh, we are really meant as a tool for uh, building the base. So, you know, if you want to build something on top of Fedora, you use specify from Fedora 37, and uh, Image Builder can build this base. And the last thing that we can build are OS3 artifacts. Uh, currently, that means Fedora IoT or RHEL 4 Edge in the, in the RHEL world. And we can build all of the artifacts, so comments, installers, raw disks, simplify this, containers, uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but I won't dig into this deeper because I think that during this conference there were like three talks about uh, Fedora IoT and Earth for Edge, and each of them mentioned Image Builder. So uh, if you are interested, just watch the recordings. Uh, all of the talks I was there, uh, they were really amazing. Uh, and just the last word of uh, warning some combinations are not supported yet. Uh, so, for example, you cannot build a container of RHEL currently, I think. It's not implemented, uh, but just because no one had the time to do it. Uh, but if you are interested, please contact us, and usually it's pretty fine to fill, uh, it's pretty easy to fill the matrix. But yeah, there might be some gaps in the support. So, uh, that's what images can it build. But, of course, there is one more thing, uh, because base images are nice but uh, base images are also boring, right? You can also very easily uh, build customized images, uh, and that's where Image Builder really shines, I think. Uh, we can do plenty of customizations on the image, and uh, let's, let's go over them. I picked the most interesting ones, and then uh, at the end I have the new ones, which are uh, pretty important and interesting. First, first thing first, we can do custom partitioning. Uh, custom partitioning, that's where Image Builder really shines, uh, I think, because, uh, for example, Packer is an alternative, but Packer boots the image and then does something to configure the image, then it takes a snapshot. But when you want a custom partitioning, for example, when you want a separate slash user or slash var, uh, on a booted image, it's kind of, well, it's possible, but it's really hacky, and just don't do this in production, please. Uh, but Image Builder doesn't do it. Like, everything happens uh, on, uh, you know, not booted uh, system. So it can do whatever partitioning you want, uh, which is pretty, pretty nice. And you can even use it, uh, yeah, we will even use it uh, later in, on this slide. And can, of course, install extra packages because, uh, we believe that the base operating system should just uh, carry enough stuff so it boots in the target environment and nothing much more. Uh, but that's you know pretty useless. You want something like HTTP server or I don't know what. Fedora has 50k packages or even more. So uh, there's plenty of stuff to install them there. And Image Builder can install extra packages. Uh, also, uh, it can do uh, it can add users, uh, which also, you can do it, for example, in cloud. You can do it via cloud in it, uh, which is a good tool. But maybe in certain cases, you want predefined users, so all of your deployments uh, are the same. And you have, for example, one admin user with the same SSH key everywhere. Uh, so uh, maybe it's good to, uh, to put it into the image itself. Why not? It can simplify your deployments if you need this. Uh, it can configure a firewall, of course. Once again, that's pretty nice because the firewall is configured uh, immediately after you firstly boot the instance, uh, which feels kind of secure. Uh, it can manage systemd units, uh, which is, you know, it ties nicely to the, to the extra packages because uh, web server is cool, but if you cannot uh, enable it, then uh, it's kind of doing anything. Uh, it's, it doesn't do anything. So that's thing. And yeah, now let's go to the new stuff that we introduced in past few quarters. One of it is hardening, uh, which is, uh, yeah, based on OpenScape. Basically, how this works. So OpenScape is a tool. You give it a profile, and it scans your whole system and applies some remediations. And these profiles are basically based on certifications. So if you need a certification ABC, you apply a profile ABC, and OpenScape will try to do as much as possible so your system is uh, certifiable by the ABC certification. And Image Builder can apply uh, such, uh, uh, such remediations 
on the build time. So once again, the system is hardened from the very beginning, from the very first boot, uh, which uh, helps uh, you know, uh, to establish a secure pipeline. Also, a lot of uh, the certifications require a specific partitioning, and it kind of ties together, right? You can uh, use Image Builder to do the custom partitioning and also immediately harden the file system, uh, like the system. So uh, these two features are very often used together. We can inject extra files into the image, and uh, that's also uh, very useful because you know, uh, you install a web server, you can enable it, and you can also configure it. So we can, uh, you can have an image that immediately starts to, behaving, uh, to, to behave as a reverse proxy, for example. And the feature that I like maybe most from this list is embed containers. What this means, uh, when you tell Image Builder to embed a container, during the build time, it will download the container from the container registry and put it into the right uh, directories. So when uh, you run Podman or MicroShift, it doesn't need to pull that container, but it immediately, immediately has it on, uh, on the system. And this is great if you have a disconnected environment, because then, of course, you don't have any container registries, or uh, for the IoT slash uh, Edge use case, because your uh, device might be on top of a hill and uh, there is no good internet connection and you don't want to wait 10 minutes for a container to download for a registry. So uh, that's uh, quite useful for these kinds of scenarios. And yeah, uh, I just wanted to mention uh, that, yeah, OpenScape, by the way, uh, so, so you, you can, uh, uh, so we know what it does. So for example, it, it, it can do some small changes to the configuration, like uh, changing uh, configuration auditing, SSH configs, open SSL configs. I mean, base uh, distributions are nowadays pretty secure, but uh, these uh, certifications require more, and uh, we don't want to put this config in the base system because sometimes it can, the system might behave weird because users want to use kinda, you know, older hashes and things like this. So it's always about trade-offs. Anyway. Uh, there is one more thing that um, uh, Image Builder can do, and it can immediately take care of your uploads uh, to the cloud, which is pretty cloud, because, uh, which is pretty cool because, <laughs> because, uh, because if you if you've ever uh, tried to do multi-cloud image uploads, it's a pain. Like I uploaded an image to all of these and IBM Cloud actually also, and OpenStack. And all of these CLIs are different. The process is different. You need different compartments. That's my favorite word from Oracle Cloud. Uh, you need different storage groups, storage accounts, storage containers, whatever. It's crazy. And of course, you need to have all of these CLIs installed on your machine, and it's annoying. But Image Builder abstracts this away. You just give it a config, and it will build an image, and immediately uploads it to a cloud. Uh, which is very cool because, to be honest, we believe that this should be more, uh, like more tools should do this because building an Azure image locally is fine, but uh, what are you going to do with it? Yeah, you can boot it with QEMU, but it's an image meant for Azure, so it really should end up in Azure. So we are trying to tie, this, uh, to tie these two processes together uh, so because, because it really makes sense. Uh, anyway, yeah, so uh, the image builder that you can install locally, it is both GUI and the CLI. And I, at least my understanding or my, my vision is that uh, you can play with the GUI and see what image builder can do and, you know, kind of click around and add customizations, define everything nice and visually. And then when you are done, you can just export the, uh, the, the, the blueprint and uh, then you can uh, just use the CLI and set up an automated CI pipeline. Uh, so uh, yeah, I consider this as a, a two-step process every time. Yeah, and if you want to build an image or start building images, it's very simple to install, just DNF install two packages. One is you know, the, the CLI, one is the GUI, and then it's enable the service that runs on the background and, and builds images. And you can start building. Uh, it's that easy. Yeah, good. Uh, now, I promise that I will talk also about other options how to consume Image Builder. 
And uh, it can be also run as a web service. And currently, the web service has two clients. Uh, one, well, three, but yeah. Uh, one builds golden rel images, and one builds a golden, currently, Fedora IoT images. So that means that Image Builder can be integrated with Koji. Uh, and it is. It builds images every day. Uh, the second client is our image building service in Red Hat Hybrid Cloud Console, uh, where you can, you can just grab the free uh, RHEL subscription. Uh, it's fine. Go to console. There, there is a link here. Console.redhat.com uh, slash inside slash image builder. And uh, Red Hat will build the image for you. And you don't need to maintain an infra. We will just send you a link or share the image into your account. And it will just work. So uh, my message here is that uh, Image Builder is run in a production environment and it's suitable for, uh, for you know, everyday use. So just use it. It's, it's stable. It's fine. <laughs> Good. Is that that? Yeah. And I should also mention that, uh, that the service has also an API. So we can also automate, it, uh, your, automate your CI pipeline using the hosted service. Which is pretty neat because uh, you can just call it from a container in GitLab CI and it will just, or GitHub Actions, and it will, it will build you an, an image. Uh, there should have been an image of the service, but I, yeah. Anyway, and just two items for the future. We would like to collaborate more uh, on using Image Builder to build more federal artifacts. Uh, currently, the project is with the installer team. Hello. And uh, because uh, we are talking together to building uh, Fedora installers, uh, because we would like to modernize the, the image building stack. Uh, and also, our big dream is to enable the community to easily build and share customized Fedora images, uh, because um, we think that the process currently, you know, there's Koji, Bungie, Relang, and it's like, uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty a big process. So, we sh want to uh, make something that would uh, simplify this process by a lot. I also forgot to mention at this slide, the image building service, I just like how everything ties together in this conference, like with Kubeweird, I mentioned, I mentioned, what did I mention? Uh, rel 4 h and Fedora IoT. And the service, it's actually tied to the, uh, to the keynote because it's an open source service. And uh, yeah, it's one of the, we try to follow as much, as, uh, as much uh, open service principles as possible. And Simon here is going to have a talk right after this talk about open services. So you can go there. Anyway, that's a bit of promo. It's demo time. Good. So this will be the part which can go wrong at any time. Uh, so I have this small shell script. Uh, I will show you it. I will show you the script in a bit. Uh, but I will build a config called demo for this demo, and it will be a QCow too. So we will boot it uh, in a bit with uh, KVM, uh, with just QEMO. So I will start it, and uh, now I have about five minutes to explain you what's going on because the image will be ready in five minutes. No uploads will be done uh, because of the Wi-Fi here. Uh, I yeah, I don't want to risk it, so it will be local, but whatever. Uh, so the image is building. By the way, I will quickly show you the script. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty short. I have some debug stuff in there, but basically I am just calling Composer CLI with a bunch of commands and then parsing it. It's pretty simple. I made this script so I don't need to go over all the steps because they can go wrong, so I automated it a bit. Uh, this script, by the way, will be available uh, at the archive of my talk after the talk, probably. Anyway, let's go to the configuration. We call this the blueprint, and this is what, uh, what Image Builder consumes. It's a TOML file, and you can put a lot of stuff in it. Uh, so let's go over it and uh, see what our image, when it's done being built, uh, what it will contain. So a good, uh, a nice feature that, uh, of, of Image Builder is that it can do uh, cross distro builds or cross distributions builds quite kind of easily. So my system is actually running Fedora 38, but for some reason I buy a different distribution. So uh, I, the image will actually be Fedora 37. 
So it's, it's uh, completely possible to do that with image builder. You can also, for example, build CentOS Stream 8 or CentOS Stream 9, and uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, the next thing that uh, I want to have in my image is Podman, because I want to demo the embedded container thing, and I need you know, a container, uh, the, how do you call it, container engine. Uh, so I, I installed Podman, uh, and some optional dependencies, I'm not really sure why they are actually needed, but that's a story for another day. Uh, not sure if that's a Podman bug or I don't know. Uh, so yeah, this will install Podman inside of the image. Then uh, I want to embed a container. So uh, I can just tell Image Builder, hey, download me this container. And yeah, I give it you know, the source. Uh, which is my repository at gitlab.com. It actually contains the slides uh, of this talk in a web server. And yeah, it will just save it locally as a talk container, just talk. It will be named talk. And that's it. But you know, download a container, that's, that's boring. So let's run it. And for this, I am using uh, the new Podman uh, Quadlet generator. Uh, so let's explain it a bit. Uh, it's very cool. It's, yeah, it's cool, right? <laughs> so basically, it's a system. It, it looks like a systemd unit, and systemd can consume it via its generator thingy thing that uh, Podman implemented. And so it, it is a systemd unit, right? It has a unit thing, and it apparently runs after network targets, so after the networking is up. And it can be even installed. So, like, it, when I install it, uh, it will run or it will be required by multi-user multi or default target. Uh, so it's a system unit, but there is no service. But there is a weird container section, which basically uh, the generator will translate it to a service, and it will translate this to a Podman run to a running Podman container. So I can just tell it, hey take this talk image, which you know, I, I downloaded in the previous step. And you can do the usual stuff that Portman can do. So I can just tell it, hey, publish me these three ports because it's an HTTP server. So I want ATN 443. Uh, and of course, uh, the container is embedded. So I can just tell Portman, hey, don't ever pull it. You already have it in the store. Uh, yeah, so uh, that will save me some, some bandwidth potentially. Uh, so, uh, I also expect maybe with my image that, uh, that I will need to store more data. So I put there an extra var partition with uh, 10, gigs of uh, 10 gigs of size. And uh, yeah, it will be there. So this is the example of custom partitioning. Uh, yeah, there is a, just a quick note. ButterFS support not yet in image builder, but uh, we are getting there slowly. Uh, so this will be just X4, uh, but I mean, for the cloud, I don't really care. So it's fine, I think. Then let's harden the image, uh, which is this section. Uh, basically, this, this tells the OpenScape tool that's run during the, 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 uh, the build time to apply from this file. This is like a real file that you can install on your system, this profile. And then OpenScape will run anything was defined in this file and you know, the scanning, as I, uh, as I told you previously, it can, I don't know, configure SSH to not allow public, um, password keys. Well, that's, that's disabled by default in Fedora, but uh, I don't know, uh, some other stuff like enable USB guard and um, yeah, whatever is uh, needed in terms of security. And there are different profiles and on our website there are some examples of of other profiles that you can use. And you can also see the OpenScore documentation for more details. Anyway, let's go, uh, let's go to the next customization. We can add, add firewall. Uh, so just install firewall D and immediately configure it. So we uh, want to allow HTTP and SSH. And that means that all the other ports should be closed. And the last thing is, uh, is adding a user. As I promised you uh, before, uh, Image Builder can, uh, can add users. Uh, and yeah, I can just create an admin user. I can add my key. This is my public SSH key. And I can add it to the wheel group. Uh, but the issue is that, uh, so the wheel group is you know, for accessing sudo. And uh, the issue is that Fedora by default doesn't, uh, doesn't allow passwordless sudo. But that's fixable by the uh, files customizations, because I can just add a drop-in 
uh, and uh, wheel will be uh, post for list. So that's, uh, that's possible. Good. Let me just quickly open the front end. This is, uh, this is actually the front end. Uh, so you can see that the demo blueprint that I, uh, that I uh, put uh, into Image Builder uh, via the script, it's there. So it's the same thing as, as I did on the CLI, just visualized here. And you can see that everything that we talked about is here. So there is the OpenScape thing, OpenScape array mediation, there are the file system options, firewall, users. Uh, if I go to packages, there are some extra packages. Uh, you know, that, uh, there, there are also with versions, which is pretty nice. Uh, custom files are currently not there. We still need to add them, but otherwise everything is, is there. And you can, uh, you can just click create image here, you know, select that you want uh, QCOW2, and uh, it will uh, build an image for you, and you didn't need to touch uh, the CLI, but uh, we like CLI, right? Anyway, so uh, yeah, while I was talking, it took about five minutes uh, to build the image, and I downloaded it as an image, uh, as a Im file, and I will just use a simple script <coughs> that I have to deploy it. This just calls QEMU and uh, yeah, uh, forward some ports, it's nothing uh, super amazing. You can also use libvirt if you uh, like libvirt and then install it, uh, doesn't really matter, it's, there's no difference. And the image is now boot in uh, and I should be very quickly able to SSH into it. This is the scary part of the demo because it worked like 20 times in a row. Good, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the image, and we can go over the customization. So uh, Fedora 37, let's quickly verify it. It is Fedora 37. Uh, let's see if the, if the container is running. So the container is there. Uh, yeah, it's the image that I uh, had in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the blueprint. I can even, like, you can even see that the image is installed. I can even curl to there. Yeah, there is something. I can even show you in the browser that if I go I, to the localhost 8080, it's there. I just forwarded the port. So that works. So everything is good. And what's there? What's next? Uh, next was, oh, this, is, this was shown. Oh, let's show the partitioning. So if I do df dash h, you can see that var, var is there. It has 10 gigs or 9.8. Oh no, it has 10 gigs, right. Uh, so the custom partition is there. And yeah, what else? Firewall. So firewall. Let's see if I can do it on the first attempt. List all? No. <laughs> Oh, good. So by default, Fedora enables the HTTP v6 client and MDNS, and we added HTTP and SSH. So uh, yeah, th this also worked, and the firewall is actually uh, enabled. Uh, and I think, oh, I added the user, yeah. And the user, yeah, sure, I am logged in, logged in as admin, and it didn't ask for a password, so apparently my, is, my key is there, and I used sudo without any password. And yeah, that's my demo. And I think that I am almost out of slides. Yeah, I am totally out of slides. So yeah, Image Builder. Uh, I think that it's a great tool, and not only because I work on it, uh, but also because I like it. And uh, I think that with these new options, it can get you pretty far if you need a customized image. Uh, there is a lot that you can do to basically build your image push it into, into a cloud, launch an instance, and it will, it will run its workload as intended. So uh, yeah, this is Image Builder, and I'm glad that you were here uh, for this talk, and if you have any questions, please, I'm here to answer them. <laughs> Good. Yeah. That's that's a great question. So I will repeat it. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, so the question was, how did, how does the environments? I showed Q, uh, QCow, but uh, or QEMU, uh, but there were also, you know, Azure, AWS, and other ones. And how do they differ? Uh, so there are some uh, slight differences. For example, on Azure, you want to install their Azure um, Azure client. It can do some more integration. Azure agent, ah, agent. On Google, that's the same thing. Google has their own agent. Uh, so you want to install some uh, some extra packages, and uh, yeah, also sometimes the, the configuration is a bit different. For example. It's not done actually for Fedora, but maybe we should do it. By the way, CloudSick, uh, EC2 really recommends that all the distributions has EC2 user as the default user. Fedora has Fedora, so this would be something to configure just for EC2 images, which would be, I don't know, quite cool. Uh, yeah, and the package sets my uh, kernel arguments ca can be uh, different. I think that for CentOS Stream, we are disabling some drivers because they are causing some issues on some instant types. So. The differences aren't huge, but uh, I think that uh, making like images per uh, you know uh, suited uh, or tailored to the to the target environment may, it, it it makes sense. Oh, sometimes you need to take care also about like bootloaders a bit. Yeah, hope that answers the question. Uh, no, yeah, oh, right. It, that's, uh, so uh, the question was whether we always uh, do QCow too. No, it depends. For example, for AWS, we will, pro, uh, we will build a raw image because they uh, accept only raw images. For, uh, for OpenStack, it's QCow. And for Azure, they need stream optimized VHD images. So we will, uh, we will provide that. And of course, then for the non clouds, uh, you know, ISOs are produced as ISOs. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Neil? So I saw you do uh, for configuring, uh, for the dropping in the cloud, you configured Sudor um, through that. Yeah. So Sudor file format is all from error. So why isn't there like some kind of declare stanza for it that, that people don't screw them up? Because it's not like you can use vSudo while you're making those drop in files that will possibly break if it's a bit more. That's, so the question was uh, why we don't have a customization that would uh, simply allow you to alter the sudoers uh, drop-in to allow a passwordless configuration. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. And actually, funny part story, when we introduced uh, the Etsy customization, uh, yeah, I got a report from a colleague that it doesn't work. It screwed up uh, his environment. And yeah, he forgot like something in the file, white space. Uh, so I think that's a great suggestion. And our team is trying to actively seek for input so we can integrate more stuff that would help. And this is a great input. Thank you. That file, that file format is a Indeed. So Indeed. Next question. There was, yeah. Any plan to support a non RDN based distribution? Uh, well, Red Hat pays me, <laughs> and we use only RPMs. But if a community member comes and uh, does some stuff, for example, uh, the guy near next to you did some work for Arch Linux, then we are not opposed. We want to build everything. Especially Arch. Especially Arch. <laughs> no. Uh, David? Uh, sorry, you mean, okay, we are out of time. <laughs> I, can, I can answer this after the talk. Okay, good, good, okay, we are done. Thank you.